Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to shift our focus a little bit away from learning about Express and things like that and we're going to focus on APIs. The rest of this unit is going to be about APIs so let's go ahead and learn about them. First off, what is an API? API stands for Application Programming Interface. Some people call it Application Programmer Interface, doesn't really matter, um, but basically it's just a way for programs to talk to each other. It's a way, kind of a standard or a convention, for you to have your programs talk to each other. So you can make your web application talk to a different um, application, different program, and exchange data back and forth. There are an absolute ton of APIs out there, from weather to Facebook to Google to Twitter to, to Instagram to, to anything really, any, any major technology is going to have an API. Probably the most popular and the one that you're probably most familiar with is the Google Identity API, which is used whenever you sign into anything with your Google account. So if you go to any application that says sign in with Google, you'll see that a lot of times. Um, that's using the Google Identity API. So let's look at an example of an API. Right here I have a Hacker Noon article, um, how to launch your own blockchain. I don't, I don't care about any of that. But what I do care about are these buttons right here. These buttons allow you, if you click here, it will allow you to tweet about something. If you click here, it will open up a Facebook and post about it. If you click here, I assume it'll do Instagram. I don't do um, any of this really. So let's look at, no, this is LinkedIn. So this will allow you to do LinkedIn. This one's Facebook. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Facebook, and this one's Twitter. Now, Hacker Noon is not associated with Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn in any way. However, Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn created an API that allows programmers to use Twitter functionality elsewhere. Let's look at the Twitter API. Here is the Twitter API documentation. Um, it's actually pretty good documentation. It gets you started and tells you how you can do all kinds of stuff with Twitter. Basically, what happens is that for this, for this, when this Twitter thing, uh, when you click on this Twitter button, it'll have you sign in, and then when you type your post, it will send a post request to one of Twitter's endpoints with the data, which will tweet in your name. It will tweet for you. It'll have you sign in in order to verify you are indeed who you are, but then it can send out tweets from there. You can do a lot more with Twitter because Twitter has created a lot of different functionalities such as getting tweets or retweeting or liking or commenting or all kinds of different things using that Twitter API. And all of that stuff is right here. You can browse the endpoints, you can all do all kinds of stuff inside the Twitter API. So and you'll notice here it has authentication stuff. These are all get or post. You have accounts and users, you can create and manage lists, you can follow, search, and get users, and all of these are different endpoints that you can use. And you'll notice it has get account slash settings, get account slash verify credential. These are just the HTTP verb and the URL to use. Another example is the Pokey API. Let's go ahead and we can close those down and let me get the Pokey API. Copy that link. PokeyAPI.co Poke and this is just a Pokemon API that basically gives you data about Pokemon. I'm a nerd so I, I'm going to use Pokemon data. Um, one thing to note is this data will be in JSON which we will talk about in the very next video. It's just a data format. It's going to look like JavaScript objects. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Um, we'll get into that in the next video. But let's look, let's go to this endpoint right here, you'll notice it's pokeyapi.co slash api slash v2, that's the version, slash pokemon slash charmander. And this does exactly what you would think, it will give you data about charmander, the pokemon. You have um, the name, you have the different moves, click the move, mega punch, and there's the url for data about mega punch. Um, it has different information here. It's got another move. This move is Fire Punch, and there's the data about Fire Punch. So you can see that this has got um, a lot of different data about Charmander. So let's try, instead of writing out Charmander, let's just do number one and see what that does. This gives us data about Bulbasaur. The reason that it gives us that is because his ID, Bulbasaur's ID, inside of the game Pokemon is one, and that's how they have set it up. Instead of doing Pokemon slash one, let's do type slash water. This will give us data about the type water. 
Water gets double damage from grass and electric. Water does double damage to ground, rock, and fire. So you you can see that this is data. Now this is silly data because obviously this is about a video game and we don't really, generally speaking, care about that. But the fact of the matter is that I can go here to this API and get data in a reliable format that I can put into my program if I want to. And you can add additional like additional parameters to this. So let's say I wanted, um, let's just get all the Pokemon. And it has the first, looks like 20 Pokemon listed. So it looks like the default is to send back the first 20 Pokemon instead of all of them because there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of Pokemon. But we also, in the URL, have the option of doing other things like limit equals 100. And that will give us the first 100 Pokemon, not just the first 20, which is apparently the default. We can also say, let's say we wanted the second 100. We can do and offset equals 100, so this will offset by 100, so this will give us the next 100 Pokemon. You'll see here it starts at 101 and goes all the way to 200. A couple things that is important to note about APIs is that the application's developers build the API. It's not something that just happens when you create an application. You have to actually build this. Each of these is a different route that they set up on their back end, just like we set up routes in like in, in, in our intro to posts in our app.js. We have all these different routes, app.get slash books, app.get root, all that kind of stuff. They did the exact same thing, app.get slash API slash v2 slash Pokemon. They set up that route. So this is not something that happens automatically. This is something that developers have to do. It's also one, important to note that the term API is a lot more broad than this. Any type of program, program can have an API, um, such as libraries or anything like that. Pygame, if you're familiar with Python, all of the different um, Python packages or whatever have APIs. However, in today's world, the term will almost always mean a web API. A web, W-E-B, API. So, generally speaking, it's going to be a web API, and in, in this course, whenever I say API, I mean web API. If you're interested in looking at other APIs, feel free, but for this course, API is going to just mean a web API. Now, why do we care? Why do we care about all this stuff? APIs are absolutely amazing because they allow us to connect different parts of the internet like Legos. We can get all kinds of stuff. We can get all kinds of data from all a variety of different sources and incorporate that data into our applications. To give you an example, let's say that we ride our bike to work every morning unless it's raining, in which case we take an Uber. We can write code that will get tomorrow's weather data from the Open Weather Map API, check to see if it's raining. If it's raining, we can use the Uber API to book a ride, and then use the Push Bullet API to send a notification to our phone that the ride's been booked. We could even use Google Text-to-Speech API to have the forecast read aloud to us as we're getting read in the morning. There's all kinds of stuff. You're basically only limited by your imagination. There's so much that you can do with APIs once you start to learn to incorporate them into your applications. APIs are absolutely fantastic. We are going to play around with a few APIs, but it's mainly just to get your feet wet. Uh, when you build out your final application, you are going to be incorporating an API of your choice into that. So um, go ahead and just play around. You can use whichever one works best with your data. So to summarize, we got a, a high level overview of what APIs are. In further videos, we're going to actually kind of crack them open and start looking into how they work and how to actually use them. Um, but in, in brief, APIs are a way for programs to talk to each other. That's kind of the, the, the most basic way to talk about it. In this course, and in most cases overall, when we say API, we really mean a web API. So just keep that in mind. There are tons of APIs out, out there that we can use. The vast majority of them are free, but not all. Some of them have a cost associated. It's also important to note that whoever designs the API decides what data to include and how it's gonna be formatted and accessed. So that's why the documentation for APIs are so important. In the next video, we're going to talk about JSON and what it is, and then in the following videos, we're going to play around with a couple APIs and get our hands dirty to get some practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks.